I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about the Pacifica. You're gonna hear a repetitive pattern throughout this whole video. This is one of the biggest turnarounds of any brand or any model I've seen in a long time. It just goes to show what a little bit of innovation, dedication, and talent, and of course, money can do to an overall product. Now you can have the most talented, dedicated people in the world on a project, but if you don't dedicate and invest the money into it, it can go nowhere. In the case of the Pacifica, well, FCA invested more money in this platform than they do pretty much anything else. Over $2.6 billion they put into this van over the course of five years. That means updating the factory, improving technology, they wanted this to be a benchmark vehicle, back to where they started with it. So let's take a look at the front and rear. The entire silhouette, the entire front of the Pacifica is very car-like. In fact, there's this simple elegance along the whole side of it without just looking like a bread box or a jelly bean like their previous vans. You have Active Aero, which has shutters that open and close based on speed to reduce drag, to improve efficiency. Chrysler, historically, is totally overused and abused Plastichrome. Plastic chrome on everything, door mirrors, side panels, anywhere they can jam it in, they put it. This doesn't have it. And the, tr the, and the side effect of it, it looks so much cleaner all over the place. When you come to the back of the Pacifica, this is one of the best parts in terms of utility. Yes, it has an electronic lift gate, but I'm pleased to report that this is one of the faster units, actually one of the fastest ones compared to the Audi Q7 I've tested. Once you get back here, it makes it impossible to go back to a regular CUV, these cute utes and all that, because the way that these seats fold down is just stupidly simple. From raising them up to their upward position to folding them back down is just ridiculously easy. And it opens up this cargo space. Really, there's nothing like it besides some monstrous SUV. The other part that's beautiful about minivans in general, and specifically the Pacifica, every single door, well aside from the front, is power operated. The two sides are power sliding, which means you can operate it via a remote control. Opening it is as simple as tugging on the handle, and to close it, all you have to do is that. It's just the simplicity and functionality that you expect from a family hauler. I like the butt crack down the middle. So, Scott, we looked at this front to back, and what was your first comment? If you put me under this thing and I didn't see what it was, I would have had no clue what the hell it is. Besides, obviously, it says Mopar right there, but I, I wouldn't think it was a minivan. The biggest thing with the Pacifica, this new generation, is it really shares virtually nothing with the outgoing town and country and caravan and it totally shows the second you get underneath here and the first time you get behind the wheel and drive it. So underneath, there is a good mix of materials. There's use of aluminum here, spe specifically you said for this rack. Some monster front brakes, dual pistons. I mean, that's the first thing I said when I saw this. Look how big those front brakes are. It fills that entire wheel up. I mean, it, and it makes sense too. I mean, they want this to be a better driving experience, which is was one of their fundamental changes in design. This wasn't just about being a bread box on <laughs> wheels like the old van was. Before we move along to the back, we talked about a lot of vehicles make it difficult to service or change oil, because that's what you're gonna be doing under here mostly. And you said that you have an access flap here to get at the uh, filter. No, the filter's on top. Oh, the filter's on top. So the drain plug is easily accessible through that cover. So that's the point here is this is again all new and you can tell by looking at it immediately that they've changed everything. Uh, the multi-link rear, uh, the placement of the dampers, 
the way the exhaust is run, and actually you can tell the actual quality of the exhaust has gone up, just all the little details here is a massive improvement. And then of course, as we talked about, these composite covers that are all used not only for aero, but for sound deadening purposes. I still wanna see wind tunnel testing with these on and with these off to see how different, how much of a difference it actually makes. Difference. Well, maybe we should write a manufacturer and see if they'll take one of their cars and do a before and after wind tunnel testing to see how much drag and I all mean, that. I'm sure they invest tons of money into this stuff. Oh, it's not yeah. like we'll just slap this on and cut it out of cardboard and make it work. Right. It's not like that. Given the history of their van products, they've been pretty reliable. Aside from just typical bullshit right. Midwest stuff with frames and rust and all that. In terms of trans and engine, it was a pretty stout setup. Just a, a lot of stuff went sooner than other cars just because of quality. Okay. I mean, starters, alternators, radiators. It's like, man, those things fail 80,000 miles. Other cars can last a life. Okay. You get what you pay for. Yeah. There's a reason they're cheaper than everything else or were cheaper than everything else. Let's talk about the motor for a second. 3.6 liter V6, and this is the only motor option here. There, you're not and that's good. I don't, why I have 3.0, 3.3, 3.8, well, I have three different, well, pretty much of the same, I mean, a completely different engines, but. It, it's gotta make, it's gotta be less costly to have, not have to worry about all those different platforms, it's like trying to fit them all. Toyota with their V6, it's in everything. Yeah. I mean. They've been using it for 10 years and they just keep tweaking it here and there. That's yeah, they what mass, they should do. Mass produce the hell out of this. Forget about all the little other chintzy motors and just go ahead. And that's exactly what they did. The other thing that they did with this motor is, and we talk about this a lot for longevity. What, V6, not a four cylinder turbo pile? Well, no, yeah, it's nice not to have a <laughs> turbo here. And when you drive it the first time, you're like, thank God this is a V6. I, and I, after being in some of these turbo fours, I take this any day. I don't care what brand it is, Chrysler, uh, Daihatsu, I'll take a V6 over some turbo four in a bigger car. It's just, there's a level of refinement that you get there. But the other part with this motor, it's the thing that we like. What's that, Chrysler? No, it has to do with fueling. Oh, port injection. Yes, there is no direct injection on this motor. And if you're watching this video, you need all you need to know is if you don't know you will not have to worry about doing any additional intake valve maintenance or car, you won't have to deal with carbon buildup that's on the direct injected competitors as much as companies say oh we've mitigated that and they've done enough tricks with this motor now they've upgraded the actual compression it has cooled EGR there's lower uh, friction piston rings, all the little details that they did to, to increase efficiency and fuel economy here. They've maxed this out with port injection, including changing coils and spark plugs. This is about as efficient as you're gonna get on a non-direct injected motor. And again, going long-term, long-term ownership, that I think is gonna save a lot of money for people. People are buying this to keep it for the long run. This is not a car that they're like, oh, I'm gonna trade this every two years and get the newest, you know. All right. The Pacifica. I did a really nasty video about the previous generation town and country, and a lot of that was a joke. <laughs> it was mostly for my own amusement, but there was some truth in there. I felt like that vehicle was just a giant tin can on wheels. It felt bad to drive. The steering, the handling, the interior noise, the way the whole chassis flexed like an 89 LeBaron with the top down, it was just not good. And then you get in here, well, like I've said throughout this entire video, they've changed everything. No longer do you feel like it's twisting and vibrating and just a gross driving experience. This is so substantial, namely in the handling department, where you have utter confidence to drive this almost like a sporty sedan. For sporty driving, I have the traction control off and I switch the transmission in a low to prevent gear hunting. Let's check it out. All right, let's check out the acceleration here.
this is definitely in this van just more than most anybody's gonna need in terms of just performance it is so smooth it is so enjoyable to just rev this motor out it makes all its power at the high end so as you rev it just makes more and more power uh, and that is a great change from all these new eco turbo four cylinders where you get all this torque all this power right up front and then it falls flat on its face you don't get that here the only negative part about the acceleration is in the lower rpm i feel like the ecu is pulling timing out of it i'm not sure if it's a fueling issue or a programming issue but you have to get it sometimes above like 35 4000 rpms before you feel a surge of smooth power come on and it just below that sometimes i get this jerky feeling from it which is kind of annoying and inconsistent Now, one of the things with the stability control system is it allows you to have a little bit of fun. Uh, you know, obviously, you're not going to be driving this van like a madman, but it's not overly aggressive. It, it totally cuts in when you need it, but for the most part, uh, the car is extremely forgiving and allow, it gives you the flexibility to do what you want when you want it. Steering feel is really good for a vehicle like this. You don't, you don't feel totally isolated. You kind of feel what the wheels are doing at all times, and you get a good sense of traction and just overall road feel from the car when you're pushing it, or even when you're not pushing it. You can always kind of tell that the steering's a little light. It's a little bit overly light, but that's what most people want. Let's take this through the turns here and just see how it handles the... You know, there is understeer, and you, can, you do feel the car's weight, but it's so well dampened that it's hard to complain about it. Again, it doesn't feel like a tin can like the old town and country. One thing I will tell you is this transmission, like most people complain about this ZF9 speed is, it gear hunts a lot. In aggressive driving, hilly driving, or mountainous driving, I just switch the transmission to low and it eliminates its tendency to always want to get you to sixth, seventh, and eighth gear. It kind of keeps you in the lower gears. It stops the annoyances that you get from always having it upshift and upshift and upshift to the highest gear for efficiency. Now, when you're just driving on the street and you're not putting your foot down, most people are never gonna have a problem with this. But if you're, if you're heavy on the gas, you have a lead foot, you're gonna notice it's always downshifting, upshifting. And that's something that I think a lot of the engineers need to work on with this transmission going forward because it's, it's on multiple cars now. It's not just here in the Chrysler. Now I've talked a lot of, about techno babble and things that mostly people that are gonna buy this van don't care about. But my point is, is this is extremely satisfying to drive. Not only does it give you the comfort it gives you stability. It gives you really solid handling out of a great chassis that's well dampened. Uh, doesn't feel sloppy like you would anticipate a minivan to feel. It feels better than a lot of the three row crossovers out there in terms of dynamics. The motor, the V6 in here, I can't speak to its longevity, unfortunately, but the way that it's set up is extremely fun and satisfying to drive every day. You never feel a lack of power, never feel a lack of torque. It's just it's always got what you want and that's a big deal now fuel economy of course i'm driving it like a madman and i'm getting around 19 miles per gallon which is what i expect from a van like this but i think if you drove it like it's designed to be driven and have that transmission always have you in eighth and ninth gear this is probably going to net you somewhere in the middle 20s especially on you know city or not city but you know freeway driving The interior. There's something that I've left out of this whole entire video because I wanted to talk about it here. One of the most important parts about it, if you're looking at this vehicle as a whole, that is the chief engineer is a female, Jessica Lafon. She was in charge of this project from beginning to end, despite having plenty of offers to move on. And what that means here, and it's incredibly rare in the automotive industry, is you get attention to detail and practicality that most men don't bring to, to design overall. There, there's thought about how this is gonna work every day and be practical for family use. The biggest and best change about the new Pacifica from the previous generation van is fit and finish and quality. 
The armrests are padded almost perfectly, arms and door. The leather doesn't feel like they found it in a Chinese landfill of scrap material. The center stack is so well designed here compared to the previous generation, it no longer feels like they paid a bunch of sixth graders $5 an hour to design it. There's high quality rotary knobs. This transmission, the e-rotary knob, has this machine top with a very grippy section and a solid clicking feel for the ZF Trans. You don't have the, the digi shifter. It feels just good. All the buttons and knobs have a very high quality feel to them, something that Chrysler hasn't particularly been known for in the past. Next thing to talk about is overall input points. The steering wheel almost feels BMW-ish, including the stitching. It's very solid. It feels really good to the hands. All the supporting knobs and switches from your headlights to your door switches to the storage releases to all the physical uh, releases, including glove box, it all has a very solid feel, a durable feel that you can at least there's a sense of confidence not everything's going to break in here and it doesn't feel like it's over plasticized like a, a child's toy either it still maintains a quality look but a durable look at the same time now depending on your trim level the more features you get obviously this mid-level trim kind of ditches some of the safety features that you would get for paying more you don't have the premium audio system but you do have this uconnect system and this is actually one of the best integrated designs i've seen in any car it's almost bezel-less, this screen. Uh, the clarity is amazing, although I'm not a big fan of the glossy finish on it. It, it definitely is a fingerprint mag magnet. And that's also where some of the negatives extend. If you're using this overall, you have kids throwing their hands on everything, boogers, all that. You have the, all this piano gloss black trim all over the place and it's going to be a fingerprint a dust magnet it's going to look really disgusting over time in terms of speed and usability of this uconnect system well the only issue i have is there's no central command knob and there's no place for it here between this e-rotary knob on the center stack that you can fuse as a volume switch uh the actual hvac blower mode is a rotary switch there's really no place to put it so you're reliant on touch screen that's its best and worst part but the same thing is, at the same time, it's ultra speedy to use. It's extremely fast. One of the best graphical user interfaces of any infotainment out there. And the sound system for the bass audio is extremely good. If you're worried about whether it's going to pack the punch you need without spending the extra money, the bass audio is going to be almost perfect for most families. If you wonder why I'm always ragging on three row crossovers, it's because of this. I challenge you to spend a half hour and you tell me that any three row crossover is better than the Pacifica layout in terms of accessibility, usability, ease of use, and just overall comfort. Every single seat in here folds into the floor with a simple mechanism. It's easy to flip down these stow and go seats in the front. You take off the floor mats, you lift up this floor pan with the little release switch. This will lock and you can pull the seats up and fold them down into the floor. I've never used a better and more thought out system than this. It can turn from cargo van to straight up family hauler in about five minutes and anybody can do it. The overall comfort of the front, the second row of seats and the third row of seats is totally usable for pretty much anybody. You can use this as a true three row vehicle with very little compromise. Even getting in the back row doesn't require uh, you to be a five year old and in gymnastics. And that's one of the best parts about this Pacifica. By now, you probably already know the conclusion. This is the best minivan I've ever been in. It's also one of the best product turnarounds I've seen from one generation to the next. It's remarkable what dedication and, of course, financial resources can do to something. But I'm not going to lie. Uh, a video and a review can only do so much for you. This is one of those few vehicles you need to take your family down to a dealership and really get in and out of it to decide if it's going to work for you. But one area I will editorialize, this confirms my hatred for the three row SUV crossover segment. This blows all those away. So if you're on the fence between a three row crossover and a minivan, I'll take this 100% of the time. It's too bad you don't have the FRS anymore. We could race them. Oh, this probably would blow that away. What is it, like 300 horsepower? I don't even know what the horsepower is on here. It doesn't really matter. It it's, does. It's quick, and it winds. It makes power at the high end as well. 